And a good evening, all you high school football fans. Welcome to Sammy Howard Field, also known as the Swamp. We are here at Glenwood as the Glenwood Gators get ready to take on another region opponent, the Rebels from Bessemer County Academy. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW, Jabama and Beam. How is everybody doing this evening? I am Richard Holders alongside my broadcast partner, Corey Bank. Corey, welcome to week four. This is incredible. We had a very incredible Smith Station Prattville game we called last week, and now we get to be at Glenwood for the very first time this season, and I got to tell you, I'm very impressed. It's going to be a amazing atmosphere tonight. We get to see this Glenwood team for the first time. Last week, they are coming hot off a great win, a 40 to 21 win, Richard. They did pick up their first victory of the season. Most importantly, they're 1-0 in region play. They started the season 0-2 after going across the river, taking on two private schools from the state of Georgia, St. Ampicelli, where they lost 28-13. And then they lose to Brookstone here in the home opener on a heartbreaker, 25-23. But they had an incredible game against Fort Dale Academy last week. Uh, thanks to JT Banks, who rushed... 14 carries, 133, 130 yards, and four touchdowns. And they had a hot start against Fort Dale Academy last week, and they're looking to have a hot start here against Bessemer Academy. What can I say, Richard, about JT Banks, running back, number six? He is the definition of a balanced running back. He has the ability to make defenders miss with his shake moves. But once he gets up in between the tackles, he can make defenders miss, where he's able to run them over, dragging defenders. But when you actually get him on the outside in a screen pass game, he's a dynamic player for this Glenwood team. And leading the Gator offense is the quarterback, Dallas Crow, the 5'10 junior, who looked poised in the pocket last week in their first region victory. And we saw Jackson Milliam take it to the house on the first score of the game on the kickoff return. He is a playmaker on not only in the kick return game, but also as a wide receiver. So Glenwood, as we are about three minutes until kickoff, this is just, it's just an incredible atmosphere. Like I said, the first time that, that we've been at Glenwood, we'll be here a couple more times in the season. But Corey, I'm ready to, to call this game and get ready for an exciting game of football in the AISA. It's going to be a great game. So back to Dallas Crow. Dallas Crow, the Glenwood starting quarterback. What can I say by him? He is a dual threat quarterback. He's comfortable in the pocket, steps up in his throws, and is consistent with his reads. When the defense gives him that zone coverage, he exposes it and is able to hit the inside routes, on the medium routes, on the slant routes, on those in routes. But then when he gets outside the tackle box and uses his legs, he could throw the long ball. So the Glenwood Gators, they're wearing their traditional home uniforms. They're all orange tops with the white letterings, their orange pants with the white stripes and their traditional helmet with the white Glenwood logo with the orange helmets. And as the crowd gets fired up is here comes the Glenwood Gators and first year head coach Ryan Nelson. And the thing about coach Nelson is he was an offensive coordinator with the Central Red Devils that won the state title in 2018. He does have some championship pedigree. Glenwood last year finished six and five. They did lose in the second round in the playoffs to Pike Liberal Arts. But in this region, Glenwood is ready for action, playing their second game in region play. And the road gets a little bit tougher. Next week, they got to travel up to Auburn to take on Lee Scott Academy. But first, Glenwood wants to try to pick up their second game in region play and even their record at 2-2. Two two. Bessemer Academy coming into this game 0-2 on the season after losing last week 28 to nothing to Atuga Academy. And so Bessemer, one of those programs that wants to try to spoil a victory here at the Swamp as it looks like Bessemer is taking the field and Glenwood is getting ready to kick things off as well. A guy to look for for this Bessemer Academy team is Joey Harmon, wide receiver. He is a great all-around athlete. You can line up in the slot and bring him in motion and do jet sweeps. 
but then you could get him on the outside and you could throw that deep ball. You could get him the ball inside on the medium routes, but the guy, when he gets a second level, he's got that track star speed. Bessemer Academy will get the football first. Kicking things off for the Gators is number 30, Griffin Montroy. Back to receive for Bessemer is Evan Cochran and number 35, David Snodgrass. And we are underway here at the Swamp, and it takes a bounce inside the five-yard line. Here comes Snodgrass returning it. He's at the 20, and a big hit. He gets taken down at the 22-yard line, and that is where the Rebels will start things on offense. Snodgrass tried taking the ball up the field, getting near the 22-yard line, but excellent special teams play by this Glenwood team. Nice pop to start the game. Now, they normally have a dual quarterback, but Matt Massagill is injured, so in comes Jackson Reinhardt, the 5'10 sophomore, to lead the Rebel offense as they will have the football first to start things here at Sammy Howard Field. Back in the shotgun is Reinhardt. He has three wide receivers, the lone single back, and the handoff is to the running back, number 30, Evan Cochran, and he picks up four yards. It'll be a second and six. The handoff was a read up the middle to Evan Cochran. He drove the pile for a four yard gain. So now we have a second down and six and Reinhardt leading the Rebel offense once again. And we did mention that um, we are having a Thursday night game instead of a Friday night game because of the possible inclement weather in the Chattahoochee Valley tomorrow. So we are here on Thursday night if you're, you're watching. So here we go, Jackson Reihard in the shotgun. Now with four wide receivers, ball is on the 25-yard line, and we're going to get a timeout. Looks like it'll be a delay a game on the offense. That's going to back them up five yards, erasing that four-yard gain. So it will be a second down and 12. Ball will be at the 20-yard line for Bessemer Academy. We get ready. We just underway here at the Swamp. Glenwood, one and two on the season after getting their first victory against Fort Dale Academy last week. A four wide receiver set, the lone single back as Reinhardt in the shotgun. Reinhardt back to pass, and that is intended for Micah Ruffin, but it is dropped, and it will bring up a third down and 12. Reinhardt was trying to get out to his athletic receiver, Ruffin, on a screen pass. Unfortunately, an incomplete pass, third and long. So it brings up a third down situation where the Gator defense can just stay back on their heels. They don't have to try to make something out of a big play, but here comes Reinhardt out of the shotgun, four wide receivers. His lone back is Cochran. Reinhardt back to pass. There's a throw and it is incomplete. There was some contact there and it looks like we're going to get our first flag on the defense. So Reinhardt tests the defense early, throwing the long ball. It looks like a deep flag route on the inside. And as a result, an illegal contact, first down, Bessemer Academy. So that is a huge break for the Rebel offense as they had a third and 12. And the penalty by the Gators gives them the first down as the ball is on the 35-yard line. 10.32 left to go here in the first quarter. We have a scoreless ball game here at the Swamp at Sammy Howard Field. Reinhardt in the shotgun with four wide receivers. Cochran is the lone back. Reinhardt back to pass, feeling the pressure. It is caught, but taken down Joey Harmon, but he gets minimal gain as the Glenwood defense is right there on the play. A minimal pass play, getting it right on the outside, but great defensive stop by Camden White, cornerback number 42, just showing how stout he is as defensive back. He does get one yard on the play. He'll bring up a second and nine for the Bessemer Academy offense, 0-2 on the season, trying to get their first victory. As we have Reinhardt leading the offense, four wide receivers, ball on the 36. And the handoff is to Cochran. Cochran gets taken down for a minimal gain, 
as Lamont Burton with the tackle, bringing him down, sets up a third down. Excellent run stuff by outside linebacker Lamont Burton, filling the holes for a two yard game. So the ball is at the 38 yard line, third down and seven. And let's see if Glenwood can get the defense off the field. They've been on the field because of that penalty. But let's see if Bessemer Academy can get something here. Reinhardt in the shotgun, four wide receivers. Back to pass, he'll roll to his left, and he gets taken down for a sack. What a sack by Lane Griggs. And the Glenwood defense stops Bessemer Academy. Suffocating defensive front. They brought the linebacker blitz on the outside. Lane Griggs, linebacker with the sack, fourth down. So Glenwood will get the ball here in the first quarter. Back to receive this punt is number 12, Mason McCrane. And he is standing at the 35 yard line to accept this punt, but we're gonna get a pre-snap whistle. As a John Terry, uh, doing the punting duties for Bessemer Academy. And it's a false start. So that's going to back him up five yards, Richard. And it just gives Glenwood a little bit better field position depending on how far he kicks this ball. But really, it just pre-snap uh, penalty there. And here, here it goes. Here's the snap, the kick. It is a line drive punt that is taken right at the 45 yard line, goes up the field and taken out of bounds. A nice return by number 42, Camden White. Excellent return by Camden White, getting near the outside, toward the sideline, stiffs arm the guy. And where we are, Glenwood is going to start with excellent field position, ball on the 45 yard line. Glenwood is already in Rebel territory and out leading the Gator offense is Dallas Crow, number two. And he's got his running back, JT Banks, in the backfield. The spread option, the single back is Banks. Three wide receivers, ball on the 45 yard line. Crow in the shotgun, Crow rolls to his right, steps up, throws, there's a long pass and it is caught! Complete, Mason McCray, touchdown, Glenwood. On the first offensive play of the game, Dallas Crow shows exactly how athletic he is. He gets right outside the tackle box and throws a long ball. Touchdown, Glenwood. Glenwood wastes no time putting points on the board. And Dallas Crow showing his arm strength. I know Bessemer Academy was honing on to JT Banks, scoring four touchdowns in last game. That's a way to get this game started if you're Glenwood. When you're a key player like JT Banks, when you have a man-to-man -man coverage, you're gonna test the waters here. And they threw the long ball early. Montroy getting ready for the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick. And it is no good. So with 8-10 left to go here in the first quarter, Glenwood strikes first. Your score, Glenwood six, Bessemer Academy zero. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Chabama and Beam. Beam is delivering gig speed internet to 100% of our network. But should you get a gig? Well, if you want to download an album in a blink, video conference in 4K, make virtual reality more real, power all of your home smart devices at the same time, and still have bandwidth to stream everything without buffering, then yeah, you gotta get a gig. So call, click, or visit and get it. Because when you gotta get a gig, you gotta go with Beam. Bringing East Alabama more. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field at the Swamp. Glenwood strikes first over Bessemer Academy, 6-0. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank here for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. And Montroy to kick things off. It's a line drive kick, and it takes a bounce at the 15-yard line. It's a muff, and who's got it? It looks like Glenwood's on top of the football. That was a live football, and Glenwood 
takes advantage. Incredible play by the Glenwood special teams getting down there. That's what it takes. Sometimes it's hustle plays to get down there and get that muff punt. Not, and muff kicked off. Now we're in a scenario where they can really knock on the door and score some more points. And the brakes just fell Glenwood's way on that kickoff. It, it felt like an onside kick, but it was just a line drive kick that was muffed by the Rebel uh, special teams player. And now Glenwood is back on offense with a 6-0 lead. Dallas Crow in the shotgun. He's running back is JT Banks. The handoff is to Banks. He's at the 20. He's at the 15 inside to the 13-yard line. Give him seven yards on the carry. A nice run by JT Banks. JT Banks gets the halfback read outside, getting right outside the tackle box, driving forward for a seven yard game. He'll bring up a second down and three at the 13 yard line as Glenwood in striking distance once more. Crow in the shotgun, three wide receivers. JT Banks in motion, and we're going to get a pre snap penalty. Looks like it will be on the offense. It will be a false start. It will move Glenwood back five yards. So that last play, Richard, will negate the run that JT Banks had. So with that, it will bring up a second down and 11. And so we are at the 18 yard line now for Glenwood. Dallas Crow, he is a junior and he's leading the Gator offense, JT Banks, who had four touchdowns at Fort Dale Academy last week. And Crow's gonna take it himself as a quarterback keeper. He's at the 15 and gets taken down to the 10 yard line. He got most of it back. It's gonna be close to a first down. Uh, that brings up a third and a manageable situation. Excellent quarterback draw up the middle. The offensive line getting the push needed up front, giving it for Crow for a seven yard game. It is third down and three. Ball is on the 10 yard line. Glenwood already up six nothing early in this contest. Three wide receivers, Crow, the handoff is to Banks. Banks is at the 10, cuts, breaks the tackle, and he's into the end zone. JT Banks. Touchdown, Touchdown, Glenwood, JT Banks. Excellent carry from JT Banks. He just showed on that one, he drove the pile. He drove all the defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Glenwood. Well, he had two defenders on him. He was breaking tackles, and he had the will to get across the goal line and broke the plane. He looked like Earl Campbell on that one. Oh, that's a great analogy. 12-0 is your score. Montroy on to kick the extra point. It's a two-point conversion. No good, but they're going to get a whistle here as a pre-snap penalty. And it's encroachment on, it's actually offsides on the All offense. That's a rare penalty. You, you really don't see it that often, Corey. But it will back Glenwood up five yards. And now this will be like a manageable field goal attempt. I mean, at this point in time, they were definitely in a formation which was unorthodox. But typically you see this kind of formation in special teams play. So they're going to kick again. We will try this again. Montroy on to attempt the extra point. And we'll get another whistle. It's going to be offsides on the defense. So they get those five yards back. So with that last one, I guess it's going to offset. They're going to move five yards. So it, we're, we're back to square one. They're going to attempt this extra point at their normal line of scrimmage, so here we go. So on to kick the extra point is Griffin Montroy. He missed his last attempt. So sometimes you just, you gotta get out there and just gotta give your kicker confidence. I mean, that's really what it's all about is knowing that you have an opportunity to get it next time. So Montroy is here on to attempt the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it is up. And it is good. So with 6.26 left to go, Glenwood now leads Bessemer Academy 13 to nothing. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean. 
If you're in the market for any backyard structure, shop Meguiar's Buildings for the guaranteed best portable buildings with the best warranty in the business. We also offer cabanas, greenhouses, and pergolas, plus all steel carports and garages. At Meguiar's Buildings, you'll never feel pressured. Just great quality and friendly service from the family that's been in the business longer than anyone in the area. Delivered or built on site. Purchase, finance, or rent to own. Meguiar's Buildings in Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. On Veterans Parkway across from Bellwood Body Works. Or visit www.meguiar'sbuildings.com. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field at the Swamp. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank, the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama. Corey. Tonight's starting lineups is brought to you by Smith Station Pharmacy. They've been serving Smith Station and the surrounding areas for over 40 years with their staff. They will treat you like your family, a local, independent pharmacy. They provide health care and they customize everyone's needs to all their patients. They'll take care of you today. Glenwood leads Bessemer Academy 13 to nothing. Montroy to kick it off. And it is a high up in kick that's taken at the 10 yard line and up and gets tackled. Right there is number 35, David Snodgrass. And that is where Bessemer Academy number will take over. Jackson Excellent Davis. special teams play once number again 14, by this Oakland. Glenwood team. Once again, keeping the ball inside the 25 yard line to start the drive, excellent job. And out on offense, Jackson Reihardt leading the Rebels from Bessemer Academy. A lot of people don't know where Bessemer Academy is. It's just outside of Birmingham, but uh, which famous athlete came from Bessemer? You know, Corey? All right, here we go. Jackson Reinhardt, and there's the Run to Cochran, he, he gets taken down, and there's going to be a flag on the play. On that last play, Richard, there was too much penetration in the backfield. They were going east and west. Great job by this Glenwood defense. Yeah, it's going to be a flag on the play, Glenwood with the penalty. And it's going to be a first down for Bessemer Academy. Looks like it was a personal foul, a 15-yarder. So the Rebels are going to be spotted at the 37-yard line. So with 6-11 left to go here in the first quarter. Bessemer Academy in the shotgun. Reinhardt back to pass. He's in the pocket, feeling the pressure. There's a long pass, and it is incomplete. It was intended for Ruffin, and it will bring up second down. Reinhardt tried to test the defense, throwing the long ball. Ruffin couldn't get to it. Incomplete pass. All right, we are going to get a timeout on the field. So you are watching the high school game of the week on the CW, Jabama and Beam. Your score, 13 to nothing here in the first quarter. Glenwood on top. Spy City Towing is now under new ownership and new management. Now that we are family owned and operated, Spy City Towing takes pride in our fast and friendly customer service and the availability we have to help and serve you. Breakdowns, collisions, flat tires. We know things happen on the road all the time. At Spy City Towing, we understand. And with many years of experience, we are here for all your towing needs 24 seven. Call Spy City Towing at 334-732-1TOW. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call your State Farm agent, Carol Perdue in Phoenix City today. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field. We got a second and 10, Bessemer Academy. Reinhardt back, he's gonna keep it himself. He's at the 35, he's still on his feet and he gets taken down, a big tackle by number 42. What a tackle on the play, brings up a third down. Camden White with the stop. Excellent tackling by this Glenwood team. That's a guy we're gonna see all night long. Camden White stepping up when you needed to be in pursuit. Great angle to the football. No gain, third down. He'll bring up a third and 10. Ball is at the 37 yard line. Once again, 
Vesper Academy is in a third and long situation. The Glenwood defense stepping up. The Bessemer Academy has converted on a third down already thanks to a penalty, but Reinhardt, he's gonna roll to his right. He thought about throwing it and he fumbles the football and who's got it? It looks like Bessemer Academy does fall on the football, but it brings up a fourth down. That whole entire defensive line was in the backfield. That one suffocating defense, too much penetration up front. Glenwood gets it done once again. Fourth down. I got to tell you, Corey, this Glenwood defense has been stout. They've been putting the pressure on, and their DBs have covered as well. And once again, Glenwood's defense holds serve and forces Bessemer Academy to punt. Back receiving this punt is Camden White, who also had a big sack on that last play. And White's going to take it at the 45. He's going to turn up field. He's at the 50, and he gets taken down at the 46-yard line. And that is going to be a fumble, and Bessemer Academy recovers the football. Bessemer Academy gets one back. We saw them muff a punt, early, a kick return early this game. They get one back, poke the ball, lose for a fumble, and Bessemer Academy gets an opportunity to knock on the door. The Rebels catch a break, and out comes Reinhardt at the 46 yard line, knocking on the doorsteps of Glenwood territory. Reinhardt leading the Rebel offense in a three wide receiver set with Cochran, the lone running back. In the shotgun, Reinhardt, the give is to Cochran. Cochran takes a st couple steps up the middle, but he gets taken down by a bunch of orange Tackle jerseys for a little bit of a gain, possibly a minimal gain on the play. Cochran had nowhere to go running that football, going and east and west. The and the whole Glenwood defensive line and was in the backfield. Nine. Brings up a second down and nine. So he got a yard on the play. They'll bring up a second and nine for the Rebels. Reinhardt in the shotgun, four wide receivers. Cochran, the one lone back. Reinhardt, the give is to Cochran, turns up the field. He breaks the tackle, he's at the 50. Cochran still on his feet. It gets uh, spinned around by two Glenwood defender, defenders, but he gets the first down into Gator territory at the 36-yard line. Excellent carry by Evan Cochran, finding the hole in the defense. Great blocking for the offensive line. Great vision. First down, Bessemer Academy. This has been the best drive that the Rebels have had all day, and Reinhardt, he's got four wide receivers. Cochran, he's been getting the majority of the work. He gives to Cochran, and he gets possibly a couple of yards as Glenwood was waiting for him with a bunch of orange jerseys. They'll bring up second down. Once again, Richard, Glenwood stuffing up the holes. No running lane for Evan Cochran to run through. Great defensive line play by this Glenwood team. Cochran gets a yard on the play, second down and nine, as the clock continues to run here in the first quarter. Glenwood already up 13-0 on Bessemer Academy. Reinhardt in the shotgun, rolls to his right. He evades the defender, and he is going to take it up to the 30, trying to get all the back, breaks a tackle, breaks another one, and he gets close to the first down yard mark, and it will be a flag comes out after the play was over. On that last play, that was all Reinhardt. He got to the second level, getting right outside the tackle box, getting right up the field, using his legs. First down, best for Kevin. That will move the chains once again for the Rebels. It was really all effort by Jackson Reinhardt. And that penalty will actually tack on some more yardage. So the ball is at the 11 yard line. The perfect scoring opportunity for Bessemer Academy as uh, they've been doing very well on this offensive possession. Uh, they have the big break on the turnover on special teams. But now Bessemer Academy is at the 11 yard line down 13 to nothing. Reinhardt in the shotgun. The give is to Cochran, he turns up the field, breaks a tackle, Cochran is in the end zone, untouched, and Bessemer Academy gets on the board, touchdown. Evan Cochran takes a carry, off tackle, getting outside that five hole, 
find a seam. Touchdown, Bessemer Academy. And with that, Bessemer Academy gets on the board. They now trail 13 to six, pending the extra point from John Terry. Terry is on to attempt the extra point for the Rebels. With 1.33 left to go, that was the drive that Bessemer Academy needed to get back into this football game. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it is up, and it is good. So with 1.33 left to go here in the first quarter, your score, Glenwood 13, Bessemer Academy 7. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call your State Farm agent, Carol Perdue in Phoenix City today. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field at the Swamp. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank, as Bessemer Academy gets on the board from a touchdown, and they cut into this lead 13-7. to There's a line drive kick, and that is intended for Aaron Burton, and he's going to take it out of the end zone, and actually the, the line judge is not going to let him. It's going to be a touchback. The rules in high school football, if it goes and crosses the plane of the end zone, the runner can't return it. As a result, it's a touchback. All right, here comes the Glenwood offense that they've done very well on their first two possessions. A, a touchdown by JT Banks, and then a touchdown in the air, Dallas Crow. And it's going to be uh, Mason McCrane with the touchdown pass. So Glenwood up 13 to 7. And, you know, this first quarter has really flown by. And uh, Dallas Crow leads the Gator offense out. At the 20 yard line, JT Banks is his lone running back. Crow is back to pass, steps up, throws. It is caught by number 12, Maxon McCrane. He turns up the field. It looks like the extra yards after catch gave him the first down. Excellent throw by quarterback Dallas Crow. Beautiful out route, hits his receiver, gets right on the outside part of the lane, actually. It doesn't look like they gained any yards here, Richard. All right, it looks like uh, Maxim McCrane, ball is at the 32-yard line. Crow, and the give is to Ben. He's going to keep it himself. Dallas Crow turns up the field. He's at the 40. Crow breaks a tackle. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. He gets a block. Crow is at the 30, the 20, the 10, 5. Touchdown, Glenwood. Dallas Crow on an RPO. He keeps the football, he shakes the defenders, he crosses to the other side of the field, uses his speed, and shows how much of a threat he is with his legs. Touchdown, let him one. And that was all Dallas Crow on that play. So three offensive possessions for Glenwood, three touchdowns. That's how you want to start a ball game. And Glenwood answers the touchdown scored by Bessemer Academy. On to kick the extra point is Montroy as we get set. And here it comes as the ref gets ready to blow the whistle. The snap, the hold, and the kick is up. And the kick is good. So with 42 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, Glenwood now leads Bessemer Academy 20 to seven. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. Bi City Towing is now under new ownership and new management. Now that we are family owned and operated, Bi City Towing takes pride in our fast and friendly customer service and the availability we have to help and serve you. Breakdowns, collisions, flat tires. We know things happen on the road all the time. At Bi City Towing, we understand. And with many years of experience, we are here for all your towing needs 24 seven. Call Bi City Towing at 334-732-1TOW. Well, 
Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank here for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama. Corey, not a bad drive by Glenwood. Da that was all Dallas Crow on that play. It's incredible. This Dallas Crow quarterback for this Glenwood team growing up in these last two games. We're really seeing them come together as a quarterback. Cochran's going to take it at the 20, and Cochran tries to spin out of a tackle, but he gets taken down at the 23-yard line. Once again, amazing special teams play. Another return that does not get out to the 25-yard line. you got to like what's going on with this Glenwood kickoff team. Now, Glenwood's defense has been stout, but that last drive, Bessemer Academy did drive down the field, a touchdown run by Evan Cochran. And let's see if the Rebels can duplicate their last drive. Uh, they've been in several third and long situations. So this Glenwood defense, they've been stepping up when it matters. They've also been stopping the run. And they lead 20 to 7. So they're, uh, the Rebels offense behind the eight ball as Reinhardt back to pass. He rolls to his left and there's a long pass and it is broken up and incomplete. That was intended for Caden Birch, but a bunch of orange jerseys with him. Good coverage on the play. Excellent defensive play to pass deflection by this Glenwood defense. There was a sea of all their players in the secondary. Second down. And they were just swarming to the ball. And that's good to see if uh, you like defense because you know Glenwood's defense really has stepped up on big plays and it's really hard to get separation with these receivers but really the offense for Bessemer Academy is uh, has been clicking so there's the handoff to Cochran and it's going to be a flag on the play more than likely it's going to come back and it's going to be a fumble so we'll see what the flag is and we'll see who ends up with the football here on this play on that last play they tried going off tackle to the outside but I ha if I had a guess, Richard, on this one, it looks like a holding call, and it looks like it's going to negate any kind of yardage that Bessemer Academy got on that one. Well, any time the referee uh, throws the flag on a play where the play is still in progress, it's usually a hold or, or a legal block in the back. And so it's going to back up Bessemer Academy by 10 yards, and we are going to have a long second down here. At 18 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. I mean, we've had a very wild first quarter here as at Glenwood the story has been three drives three touchdowns all right we got a second down and 10 and Jackson Reinhardt who is he's only a sophomore he's 5'10 and that's great leading the Bessemer Academy Rebels offense as a sophomore they normally have two quarterbacks but we received the word from the coaching staff earlier pregame that Matt Massengale is out with an injury. So Reinhardt is going to be the only quarterback that we're going to see tonight for Bessemer Academy. Back to throw. He's feeling the pressure, but he gets a block, and that is caught in the flat to Caden Birch. He gets some of the yards back, but it's going to set up for a very long third down. Reinhardt finds his receiver, Birch, on the outside for an out route. Unfortunately, it's going to bring it fourth down, seven yards on the play. And it winds up the end of the first quarter. So with the end of the first quarter, your score, Glenwood 20, Bessemer Academy 7. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW, Jabama, and Beam. If you're in the market for any... What is community? Is it a neighborhood? The businesses and homes inside it? Maybe community isn't just a place. Maybe it's a state of mind that when we care together, cheer together, we're closer to what really counts. At Beam, we're finding new ways to bring us all closer. And you'll find us right out there with you because community is always on our mind. Beam, bringing East Alabama more. 
If you're in the market for any backyard structure, shop Meguiar's Buildings for the guaranteed best portable buildings with the best warranty in the business. We also offer cabanas, greenhouses, and pergolas, plus all steel carports and garages. At Meguiar's Buildings, you'll never feel pressured. Just great quality and friendly service from the family that's been in the business longer than anyone in the area. Delivered or built on site. Purchase, finance, or rent to own. Meguiar's Buildings in Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. On Veterans Parkway across from Bellwood Body Works. Or visit www.meguiar'sbuildings.com. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field, also known as the Swamp, here on the campus of Glenwood. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank, here for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. We're flipping sides of the field, Bessemer Academy. They're down 20 to 7, and Reinhardt leading the offense. It is a fourth down, and they're going to punt the football away. There's a high punt that's fair caught by number 42, Camden White, and that is where Glenwood will start over on offense. Glenwood, st Glenwood will start their offensive drive on the 36-yard line. Excellent field position. Let's see what happens for this Glenwood Gator team. And the last offensive possession, Dallas Crow took it in for himself on a quarterback keeper to the house. And so Glenwood has had touchdowns from Dallas Crow, JT Banks, and Mason McCrane. And they've been a high-powered offense. They've been aggressive. They've been throwing on first down. They've been giving the ball to JT Banks. They got a 20 to seven lead. And Dallas Crow leads the Gator offense once more with a four wide receiver set. And Banks is the lone running back. And the give is to Banks. And actually it was a play fake. And it was incomplete. It was out of the hands of Aaron Burton. That was a nice play fake though. Beautiful play fake, trying to get a slant route on the inside part of the field, throwing it out to Aaron Burton. Incomplete pass. Well, I tell you, when you have a running back like JT Banks, you can use play action a lot more. It fools the defense. They spot JT Banks, and now we're going to have a second down and 10. Four wide receivers. Dallas Crow in the shotgun. Banks to his left. Ball on the 36-yard line. Man in motion. And it's a jet sweep. And the give, turn it up the field, and the give to Aaron Burton, and he gets a couple of yards as he turned up the middle of the field as he jumped a cut and gained a couple of yards on the play. Sets up a third down. On a last play, Richard, they just showed exactly what Aaron Burton does. He's an athlete. They got him on that on the jet sweep. Swiss Army knife getting up on the field, six to seven yards, and a manageable third down from the Glenwood Gators. Bringing up a third down and five. Ball on the 41-yard line for Glenwood. Dallas Crow in the shotgun. And it's a hard snap count that abated the defense to the quarterback. And is this going to be offsides? Yes, it was offsides on number 52, Josh Daly. Their top defensive player, he was trying to abate to the quarterback, but it looks like they are backing him up a bit. So it looks like it's going to be on the offense. It sure does, Richard. It looks like a false star penalty, so it negates that, that carry from Burton. And it will set up a third and ten. I, 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 up here, I thought that the, the defense uh, jumped, but it looks like they were abated to the quarterback by the offensive line. So it's a third and ten with 10.52 left to go here in the second quarter as Dallas Crow back to pass. He's in the pocket, steps up, throws, and it is caught by number 15. Turning up the field is Jackson Milliam, and he gets all those yardage back. He's at the 45-yard line. Hard to take down, but Jackson Millam gets the first down for the Gators. Excellent throw by Dallas Crow, getting the ball on the outside, getting it into the slot. First down, Glenwood. And Jackson Millam, who had that opening kickoff return against Fort Dale Academy last week, Gets the first down. Crow, the handoff is to Banks. He's got an open lane. He's at the 40. Still on his feet as he breaks a tackle. He's down inside the 30, close to the marker. It looks like he will get the first down. What a great run by JT Banks. That's what we look for for JT Banks. Rugged, uphill running, getting outside the tackle box, driving his legs and getting those extra yards. First down, Glenwood. And Banks already has a touchdown run in this game. And it's a quarterback keeper as Crow will take it himself. He turns up the field. He's at the 20, breaks a tackle, still on his feet. The five, touchdown, Glenwood. Jackson, 
Dallas Crow on that last play shows another RPO. Keeps it. Does a little shake, moves in the secondary. Touchdown, Glenwood. Dallas Crow with his second rushing touchdown of the game. And Glenwood has responded on offense. All four offensive possessions, they have scored a touchdown. On to attempt the extra point is Griffin Montroy. As a Glenwood just continuing to answer the call on offense. The snap, the kick, it's up. And the kick is good. So with 9.52 left to go here in the second quarter, your score, Glenwood 27, Bessemer Academy 7. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean. If you're in the market for any backyard structure, shop McGuire's Buildings for the guaranteed best portable buildings with the best warranty in the business. We also offer cabanas, greenhouses, and pergolas, plus all steel carports and garages. At McGuire's Buildings, you'll never feel pressured. Just great quality and friendly service from the family that's been in the business longer than anyone in the area. Delivered or built on site. Purchase, finance, or rent to own. McGuire's Buildings in Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. On Veterans Parkway across from Bellwood Body Works. Or visit www.mcguiresbuildings.com. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field, also known as the Swamp, here on the campus of Glenwood. Richard Holdridge and Corey Bank here for the High School Game of the Week. This High School Game of the Week on the CW Chabama is presented in partnership with our friends at Bean TV and made possible by all of our sponsors. And that is a high end kick. It's going to take a bounce right at the 10 yard line and taking it out is David Snodgrass. He turns up the field, breaks a tackle, and he gets some pretty decent yardage. He gets out to the 27 yard line and that is where Bessemer Academy will take over. Our sponsors that we have to thank tonight, Buffalo Rock Distributors of Pepsi Mountain Dew, Zelmo Zip In Convenience Stores, Trackside Thrift Mall, Giovanni's Italian Restaurant in Phoenix City, Go to DiningForCharities.com, Skipper Seafood, and Alpine Pond. Jackson Reinhardt leading the Bessemer Academy offense out on the field. Bessemer Academy 0-2 on the season so far. Glenwood 1-2. They won their first game last week against Fort Dale Academy and trying to get a victory here against a region opponent. And the handoff is to Cochran, and he's going nowhere as he is stuffed in that backfield by the D-line of Glenwood. Too much penetration up front. This Glenwood defensive front has been stout all night. Fill in the gaps. Nowhere for Evan Cochran to run. It was a two yard gain on the play. And it will bring up a second down and eight for Bessemer Academy, already down 27 to seven. So they have got to find something in the offense to get a spark to try to get back in this game. You got three wide receivers set. Reinhardt in the shotgun. Cochran is the back. The give is to Cochran. He finds an open hole, breaks a tackle, and Cochran gets good yardage all the way out to the 40 yard line. Move the chains and a first down for the Rebels. Evan Cochran getting up between the tackles, finds some daylight, found a little crease in the defense, drives forward. First down, Bessemer Academy. Well, anytime you have playmakers, you want to give your ball to your special playmakers. Evan Cochran is also on the kick return team. He has a touchdown run in this game. And so Evan Cochran getting those hard-earned yards gives the Rebels a first down. Reinhardt in the shotgun, three wide receiver set. The give is to Cochran. He cuts up the middle, breaks a tackle, and he gets about a seven-yard gain. He's out to the 47-yard line. He'll bring up a second and three. Once again, excellent carry by Evan Cochran getting off tackle between the guard and tackle in that five hole and shows exactly how hard of a runner he is for a seven yard game. With a second and three, so if you are watching us, this is a special Thursday night edition on, on Beam because, uh, because the inclement weather that could be rolling in tomorrow, so they moved this game to Thursday. We'll talk about the other games in action on Friday. The give is to Cochran. Cochran breaks the tackle. He's right at the sticks, and he gets across the line, and they're going to give him the first down. 
once again, giving the ball to their workhorse, Evan Cochran, this time right in that two hole, hits the gap, drives his feet, first down, Bessemer Academy. So tomorrow, both teams are on the road. Smith Station will take on Enterprise, and Russell County will take on Carver Montgomery, both region games. We're next in action next week, Corey, at Russell County, as they will take on Wetumpka. 7.30 left to go here in the second quarter. Another fresh set of downs for the Rebels. Reinhardt in the shotgun. And the give, he, it's a quarterback keeper, and Reinhardt gets taken down in the backfield by Lane Briggs. That is going to be his second sack of the game. That Glenwood defense was in the backfield. Too much penetration up front. Another sack by Briggs. And Lamont Burton was also there on the tackle as well. And it's going to be a second down and 16 for the Rebels. I tell you, both these backers in the backfield on that last play, that's very impressive by this Glenwood defense. Well, the defense has been showing pressure all night. Reinhardt in the shotgun, four wide receivers. That's a high snap to give to Cochran, and he lost some yards. He was going nowhere, that stout defense by Glenwood, but there is a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is from the line judge. It's going to be a face mask on the offense. So that excellent play will stand and it'll be a penalty. So on that last play, Richard suffocating defensive front, stuffing up the holes, showing exactly how stout they are, how athletic they are. This is the difference in the game. They knew that they were gonna take care of this game. They're gonna have to win the game in the trenches. Well, it looks like uh, Glenwood's gonna decline the penalty to set up this third down and 16. And so trips right Trips to the left, and Reinhardt in the shotgun, back to pass. Reinhardt throws, and it is caught dead incomplete. He bobbled it, but that was intended for Caden Birch. I don't know, did he catch that and fumble it and then get it back, or that was close? There looks like, are they gonna, are they gonna give it to him? Are they gonna give it to him? Because uh, up here in the, in the box, it's gonna be a fourth down. What do you think the call is, Corey? That was very questionable to uphold that catch. From my perspective, I don't even think he caught the ball to, and tuck it. You have to catch the ball, maintain position, and tuck it. I don't necessarily know if he caught that football. All right, well, we're going to have a timeout on the field. Don't go anywhere. 5.59 left to go here in the second quarter. Your score, Glenwood 27, Bessemer Academy 7. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean. You might not own the apartment building, but the ride outside is yours. And the things inside, like your office, your library, your studio. You've worked really hard for all of it. And you want to be sure it's all protected with auto and renter's insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call your State Farm agent, Carol Perdue in Phoenix City today. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field here on the campus of Glenwood. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank, here for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean. So based upon the markers, Richard, it looks like they're going to give them the first down. Wow. Say, so they, he made a football move. I, this is according to the line judge. He made a football move. He fumbled it and recovered his fumble, and that's why they're going to give him the catch and give him the first down. From up here, we're up in the press box. We thought it was an incomplete pass. It was very close. I mean, it was a bang-bang play. But it is a fresh set of downs for Bessemer Academy. Ball is on, uh, we'll say the 37 yard line of Glenwood. As a Jackson Reinhardt, he's in the pistol. Two wide receiver set. Reinhardt back to pass. It was a bobble, but the give is to Cochran. He gets a couple of yards on just a bobbled snap, but Bessemer does a good job at recovering on the play. So Richard on that full house pistol, 
It was a blast up the middle, and it was a four-yard game by Evan Cochran. So with a second down and six, Bessemer Academy already trailing in this game 27 to seven. Glenwood has had a couple of defensive stops. They've had a couple of breaks on special teams, but the story has been four drives, four possessions, four touchdowns for Glenwood. Reinhardt in the shotgun, three wide receivers. Cochran is lone running back. And the give is to Cochran. He finds a, a crease in the gap, breaks a tackle, and he gets inside the 30-yard line at the 29-yard line. Cochran found a, a break in the coverage, and he was able to turn up the field to get a couple of yards on the play. Cochran on that last carry tried stretching it outside, using his speed to get outside near the markers. Getting those yards, a five-yard gain, and a manageable third down for Bessemer Academy. And it will be a third and two for the Rebels as the Rebels have been efficient, Jackson Reinhardt has relied on Cochran to get those necessary yardage. He's got the three wide receiver set, Reinhardt in the shotgun, the handoff is to Cochran. Cochran turns up the field, he's at the 30, tries to get taken down by Briggs, and Briggs takes him down, but it looks like he gets the yardage he needs for the first down. Excellent open field tackle by Briggs, but Evan Cochran gets to the outside, puts his head down, gets east and west, but then turns north and south for a first down for Bessemer Academy. I liked how Briggs used his speed to turn up the field because Cochran had an open lane, but a good job by Briggs taking him down. First down, it's inside the 27-yard line, Bessemer Academy, down 27 to seven. And the handoff is to Cochran. He gets blown up in the backfield. What a stop, a tackle for a loss on the play by Glenwood. Excellent speed to get right on the outside edge to blow up that play. A loss on the play. Such a great play and it also will bring up a second down and 17 for Bessemer Academy. Three thirty left to go here in the second quarter, and there's a pass over caught in the flat by Joshua Thompson. Turns up the field, and he will get a couple of yards. And he'll bring up a third down. That was a design screen pass, getting it to their outlet receiver, trying to get some of those yards back. It is still a third and long. It is a third down and 12. Ball is at the 27 yard line for the Rebels. So they have trips up top and back to pass is Reinhardt and he gets blown up and taken down in the backfield for another sacks. Lane Briggs on the play, feeling the pressure and Reinhardt goes down. Excellent job by this Glenwood defense. It doesn't matter if it's the second layer with all their linebackers, their defensive line. It was a beautiful sack for this Glenwood team. All right, the coach is trying to call a timeout here. Let's see if they're gonna be in the punt formation. Back to return the punt is Camden White for Glenwood. But first, we're gonna get a timeout. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. 2.30 left to go here in the second quarter. And Glenwood leading Bessemer Academy 27-7. Back in a few. Vice City Towing is now under new ownership and new management. Now that we are family owned and operated, Vice City Towing takes pride in our fast and friendly customer service and the availability we have to help and serve you. Breakdowns, collisions, flat tires. We know things happen on the road all the time. At Vice City Towing, we understand. And with many years of experience, we are here for all your towing needs 24 seven. Call Vice City Towing at 334-732-1TOW. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Sammy Hauer Field. Yeah. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank here on the broadcast as Bessemer Academy is punting the football. That was almost blocked. Camden White back to return 
for Glenwood, and it will go out of bounds at around the 12-yard line, and that is where the Gators will start on offense. That was an excellent punt by this Bessemer Academy team, despite nearly that ball getting blocked. It is going to be Glenwood starting on their own 12-yard line. And Glenwood gets the football back with two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. They could start their two-minute drill offense, and the story has been four drives, four touchdowns, two touchdown runs by Dallas Crow and JT Banks with a big run, and he also got a touchdown run as well. And let's see if Glenwood can conduct their two-minute drill offense here with 2.30 left to go until halftime. So out at quarterback is Dallas Crow. JT Banks is his running back. And we get a pre-whistle flag on the play. And it's going to be offsides on the offense. It will back Glenwood up five yards. All right, so with a first down and 15, for Glenwood with 2.30 left to go. Dallas Crow in the shotgun. And the handoff is to Banks. Banks has an open field and still on his feet and gets out to the 16 yard line. JT Banks runs up between the tackles. Hard earned yards driving the pile. Getting it to a second and five. With that pickup of five, he gets it back, and the clock continues to run with Glenwood already up 27 to seven, trying to even their record at two apiece, trying to pick up their second win in region play. Dallas Crow back into the shotgun, and it's a play fake. The a pass in, that is incomplete intended for Aaron Burton. He tried to do a play fake, and Aaron Burton was wide open in the flat, but it will set up a third down. Dallas Crow tried to find Aaron Burton out in there for a, looks like a long slant route, incomplete pass in the play. Third and five. All right, with 2.09 left to go here until halftime. Dallas Crow with the empty backfield, five wide receivers. Crow in the shotgun, a quick two step drop, and the pass caught in the flat. What a job there on the play by Chance Coleman, number, actually JT Banks, number six, with the pass, the running back gets the first down, gets the necessary yardage to move the chains. Excellent play by Dallas Crow, getting it to the outside, to his back, on an out route. First down, Glenwood. Crow back to pass, a quick pass, and it's broken tackle out into the corner. That was a great running play there by Glenwood trying to get the necessary yardage and they get the first down. Another beautiful ball by da Dallas Crow getting it on the outside for an out route. Too much yards off the catch, first down Glenwood. Crow back to pass and that is incomplete. That was intended for Aaron Burton. On that last play, Dallas Crow tried to get it out to Aaron Burton. It looks like a little bit of a screen, maybe a little bit of flare route, incomplete pass. And on that last play, Brandon McCrane, number 80, got the necessary first down yardage for Glenwood. And so with 142 left to go, that incomplete pass stops the clock. But they are marching. They are now at the 43 yard line and they're trying to get a score before halftime. The handoff is to Banks. Banks cuts a tackle, and he has three defenders on him, and he gets extra yards. He pulls three defenders to the ground, gets three yards on the play, sets up a third down. JT Banks first goes east and west on a sweep, but then turns up the field. He carries defenders, three guys on his back, driving forward for a five-yard game. Clock continuing to move here Good. in the second right. quarter. Ball on the 46-yard line. Dallas Crow in the shotgun. Dallas Crow's going to keep it himself, and he turns up the field. He's at the 50, goes out of bounds at the 47 in Bessemer territory. 
and it is close to the marker and looks like it's going to be a fourth down and no, they're going to give him the first down. So he got the necessary yards to pick up the first down. Quarterback Dallas Crow looked like it was a design QB draw. Bounces to the outside, uses his legs. First down, Glenwood. Ball on the 47-yard line. Dallas Crow trips right. JT Banks, the lone back. 105 left to go. Crow back to pass, steps up in the pocket. A long pass, and it is caught in the flat by Brandon McCrane, taken down inside the 20-yard line, right at the 13-yard line with 58 seconds left to go. Excellent throw by quarterback Dallas Crow. Finding his guy on the outside, McCrane, mano y mano, right over the top. First down, Glenwood. And he already has a touchdown pass to Mason McCrane. So with 50 seconds left to go, Crow is in the shotgun. The give is to Banks. And he keeps a quarterback keeper, he keeps it himself. He's at the 10, the five, into the end zone. Dallas Crow, his third rushing touchdown of the game with 40 seconds left to go. Glenwood scores another touchdown. Dallas Crow using the RPO to perfection, keeps the football, gets outside for his third rushing score of the game. Glenwood, touchdown. So with 40 seconds left to go until halftime, Glenwood using the two minute drill to perfection to score that touchdown thanks to the setup by the long pass to Brandon McCrane. And now here we go, Montroy on to kick the extra point. The kick is up and the kick is good. And I think the football we, have, we don't have lights here. The lights just went out here in Glenwood. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it back to the station for a break. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean. Beam is delivering gig speed internet to 100% of our network. But should you get a gig? Well, if you want to download an album in a blink, video conference in 4K, make virtual reality more real, power all of your home smart devices at the same time, and still have bandwidth to stream everything without buffering, then yeah, you got to get a gig. So call, click, or visit and get it. Because when you got to get a gig, you got to go with Beam. Bringing East Alabama more. If you're in the market for any backyard structure, shop McGuire's Buildings for the guaranteed best portable buildings with the best warranty in the business. We also offer cabanas, greenhouses, and pergolas, plus all steel carports and garages. At McGuire's Buildings, you'll never feel pressured. Just great quality and friendly service from the family that's been in the business longer than anyone in the area. Delivered or built on site. Purchase, finance, or rent to own. McGuire's Buildings in Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. On Veterans Parkway across from Bellwood Body Works. Or visit www.mcguiresbuildings.com. Vice City Towing is now under new ownership and new management. Now that we are family owned and operated, Vice City Towing takes pride in our fast and friendly customer service and the availability we have to help and serve you. Breakdowns, collisions, flat tires. We know things happen on the road all the time. At Vice City Towing, we understand. And with many years of experience, we are here for all your towing needs 24 seven. Call Vice City Towing at 334-732-1TOW. This is more than a bundle. It's more than a combo deal. It's not just stuff. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. State Farm agents get it. It's why they're here. Call your State Farm agent, Carol Perdue in Phoenix City today. If you're
you're in the market for any backyard structure, shop McGuire's Buildings. Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field, also known as the Swamp here on the campus of Glenwood. Richard Holdridge, Corey Bank here for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama. If you're just joining us, 40 seconds left to go until halftime, and there was a breaker that went out. It happened in real time. The extra point was up and good, and we saw a flash of light up here, and the lights went out. I've never witnessed anything like this, Corey, in my broadcasting career. And what do you think could have happened? I don't even know, Richard. It was the more, some of the most bizarre things I've ever witnessed. So that was an extra point. They kicked it. It looked like it hit something that showed that the lights would go out. I mean, it's very unclear to see what it was, Richard. Well, we will keep you informed here on the broadcast. Glenwood is leading 34 to seven over Bessemer Academy. But so this high school game of the week on the CW Jabama is presented in partnership with our friends at Beam TV and made possible. This couldn't have been possible without all of our sponsors. Buffalo Rock distributors of Pepsi and Mountain Dew. Zelmo with Zip in convenience stores, Trackside Thrift Mall, Giovanna's Italian restaurant in Phoenix City. Make sure to go to Dining for Charities, GA.com, and get a special certificate for Giovanna's, and as well as Skipper Seafood. And Deli, fresh seafood and great times with the family. Located at 3505 Buena Vista Road in Columbus. Another sponsor, the Barber Saloon in Phoenix City, Walk-ins are always welcomed. We can't forget about our other sponsors, Alpine Pawn Shop and Fred's Tire. Well, it looks like the referees are going to call this first half. We're going to halftime. We still have 46, 40 seconds left on the clock. But at halftime, your score, Glenwood 34, Bessemer Academy 7. You are watching the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Bean.
Welcome back to Sammy Howard Field, also known as the Swamp here on the campus of Glenwood. The rain has started to come down, but that is actually not the reason why this game has been called. Corey, we were at halftime as we thought, but the refs have decided to call this game. It will be a win for Glenwood as the lights went out after Glenwood Dallas Crow scored his third rushing touchdown, and the extra point caused a reaction where the breaker went out and the lights went out on the field. Richard, this is something I have never seen in my years of calling games. It's going to be a 34-7 win tonight for this Glenwood team over Bessemer Academy based upon light problems. And Glenwood goes to two and two on the season, two and zero in region play, and they will travel to Auburn, Alabama next week to take on Lee Scott Academy. Right now, that's two and zero on the season, and they have looked dominant this year. That's going to be a tough road test for Glenwood, but you and I will be back in action on the campus of Russell County next week, where they will take on region foe Wetumpka, and that is going to be the next high school game of the week next week. And the next time we're in Glenwood is going to be October the 7th against Monroe Academy. Uh, Corey, I mean, I really uh, appreciated just being here at Glenwood. Just a great facility, just a great program that head coach Ryan Nelson has built up. And uh, that was a very exciting first half. That exciting first half indeed, Richard. So guys, we got to talk about that had a great ball game in this recap. Quarterback Dallas Crow of Glenwood. He had three rushing touchdowns in this first half. This Glenwood team scored on every single possession they had the football. And they also had a big break on special teams where there was a muffed kickoff that gave them great field position. They were already up 6-0 in the game, and they were able to punch that one in. JT Banks wills his way into the end zone to get a rushing touchdown, and he's just been electric, but really the story has been Dallas Crow with the quarterback keeper, three rushing touchdowns, and Glenwood gets a well-deserved victory, but they will have a tough road trip next week as they will take on the Warriors of Lee Scott Academy up in Auburn, Alabama. And a fun fact that that is where current baseball uh, head coach Tim Hudson is the baseball coach for Lee Scott Academy. He played high school baseball here at Glenwood, so he has ties to both schools. Uh, Corey, I really had a great time. I know it's it's this game has been called because of darkness, because of the breaker, but I had a great time calling this game with you, Corey. It's been such a pleasure to call this game with you, Richard. I got to thank everyone. Thank you, the fans here in Alabama. Thank you for all the fans out here in Columbus. And most importantly, thank you to our partners at Beam TV for helping us put together this broadcast. And we really got to give a big shout out to our production crew, Toygar and Shaniqua, for just doing a fantastic job at Beam with the production. Well, that'll do it here from the Swamp. Uh, once again, your final score, Glenwood 34, Bessemer Academy 7. Glenwood goes to 2-2 two and two on the season, 2-0 and oh in region play. So Bessemer is now 0-3 oh on the season. Corey, your final thoughts before we wrap up this broadcast. My final thoughts are, yes, Bessemer lost this football game 34 to seven, but they do have a shining star. His name is Evan Cochran. He showed exactly how much will he had running with the football tonight. But thank you everyone for watching this broadcast tonight. All right, so for Corey Bank, I'm Richard Holdridge saying so long from Sammy Howard Field at the Swamp here on the campus of Glenwood. Good night, everybody, and we will see you next week at Russell County for the high school game of the week on the CW Jabama and Beam. Good night, everybody.